Why is healing so hard right now? Well, because it's f***ing stressful. You can accidentally blink and someone is suddenly dead. Meanwhile, you get blamed for the slightest mistake, even when your teammate dies without using any defensive for two games in a row. <sighs> anyway, after a bunch of reworks, we're here to update our difficulty tier list for healers in the 05 patch. But quick question, what does every single player at the top of the solo shuffle ladder have in common? The answer? Time. It's no wonder that the best players are the ones who play for 12 hours a day every day. Time is the most important resource for improving, which is why here at Skillcapped, we focus on fast tracking your learning as much as possible. Be it through setting up your UI perfectly with just one click with the Skillcapped add-on package, condensing hours of knowledge from the best players in the world into custom designed, easy to digest class guides, or even teaching you exactly how to counter the spec you've been struggling with in a matter of minutes. Skillcap provides you not only with more time to play, but all the resources needed to improve. And best of all, if you don't find yourself climbing by at least 400 rating using our service, we'll give you your money back, no questions asked. All right, before anyone gets confused, we're basing our ratings on skill floors, which represent the difficulty of learning the foundations of a spec. Which means, if a healer can check all of these three boxes, it'll be on the easier side. The only way for healing to feel easier is to have strong mitigation cooldowns to slow down the game, and some way to deal with deep dampening. Well, thankfully, Holy Paladin manages to check both of these boxes while being super linear rotationally. The age-old, if it lights up, press it, is basically how Paladin plays currently with its builder-spender system. Plus, you have a ton of strong CDs to instantly shut down damage, allowing you to flatten those damage spikes that crush the souls of other healers. Then when you make it to the late game, you now have a super reliable answer with Lay on Hands, which now isn't nerfed by dampening. Their rework also allows them to use Bubble while on Forbearance, and gives them the Orc Racial passively, which makes them super difficult to take down compared to the past. Sure, there is a bit of a learning curve with knowing when to pull back and when to push in for CC, but since their CDs are so strong, Paladins are a bit more forgiving for any positioning mistakes. If we check the data, Holy Paladins still have the highest win rate out of any healer up to rival ratings. So, for the second time in a row, we will be ranking Holy Paladin as one of the easiest healers. Holy Paladin isn't alone at the top of the healer meta and is joined by Disc Priest. Their healing is powerful and still relies on the correct Radiance, Penance, and Shield sequence to maximize healing output. Some priests think that they have to play like mad doing 900 APM deathing blinds, but in reality, you can just win by hanging back and chilling now that your HPS is quite strong. Right now, Disc Priests are one of the healers best equipped for dealing with deep dampening and have tons of CDs to get there. You have a deep budget with two PS charges, Rapture, Premonition of Solace to keep your team aggressive, while you chill in the back pumping out heals. Although Premonition of Solace experienced some slight nerfs, it is still a strong cooldown, treating itself almost as an oh sh shield if you're behind. Of course, the tempo-based playstyle is still what defines the Disc Priest playstyle, and has actually become more forgiving thanks to some recent healing buffs to Radiance and Flash Heal. Anyway, despite their healing rotation being slightly more complex than Holy Paladin, Disc hasn't changed much structurally, but become slightly easier for newer players to pick up. Next up, we have Mistweaver Monk, which has been known to be a challenge to master in Solo Shuffle because of how they heal. In the last patch, monks suffered a big problem with how they heal, where they were forced to stand still, open up their spellbook, and pray they weren't interrupted. But in a meta with so much micro CC and an army of zoomers ready to insta-kick every cast, monks weren't having a good time. Thankfully, the O5 patch has provided Mistweaver monks with some massive quality of life improvements by completely redefining their playstyle, which involves a new hybrid playstyle, mixing the caster monk of the past with hints of fist weaving. In the past, fist weaving was a bit janky, especially in solo shuffle, requiring you to always stay in the fight, and honestly, it wasn't received well by the player base. The new hybrid playstyle includes rushing wind kick, but instead of directly playing in the melee range, you can now hit from ranged without sacrificing positioning. This works together with ancient teachings for some gnarly instant cast AoE healing, and even extends enveloping mist to make CC feel less punishing. Additionally, many monks have swapped over to the Master of Harmony hero spec, which crucially grants another charge of Thunder Focus T, making it easier to hard cast or instantly get out hot. But hey, if you don't like the pseudo fist weaver playstyle, you can always grab Jade Empowerment to AoE lay on hands your team quite consistently like a Sith Lord. Whether you choose the Sith Lord or Bruce Lee Root, both playstyles give monks a huge boost in healing compared to the past. Anyway, since Mistweaver received a lot of quality of life improvements, it will actually be moving down in difficulty for this patch. 
Another runner-up that has drastically changed in our original placement is Holy Priest. We can't deny that these healing buffs they've received have made this spec drastically more solid of an option. However, the caveat of Holy Priest is that it's restricted on control, utility, and damage mitigation effects, meaning you are singling down on a one-dimensional healing playstyle without much change. Imagine if you were playing Overwatch and every game you locked in as Mercy. No damage amps and no way of assisting your team, just raw healing. That's pretty much Holy Priest in a nutshell, aside from throwing out some fears and chastised stuns here and there. The reason why Holy Priest might be doing well on logs is that they have no choice but to spam heal all game. Ironically, Holy is very reactive with healing and is actually very simple with its rotation. You see a target low and you press Holy Word Serenity. Prayer of Mending is off cooldown? Press it. Seems easy on paper. Thankfully, their instant healing now is dramatically better after the most recent class tunings, which means you won't have to always resort to spamming flash heal in order for your team to recover. But if you weren't aware, Holy is one of the worst healers in dampening. Remember, you don't have any strong damage mitigation tools. You're solely reliant on healing output, which is obviously much weaker in the late game. Unfortunately, other throughput-based healers like Mistweavers and Prez Evokers are naturally better at healing, even offering more utility for actually winning games. So despite them lacking in a variety of areas, Holy Priest sees themselves struggling less than they used to in previous patches, placing them in the moderate category. On the other hand, we have Preservation, and although it still has some of the highest healing output potential, it continues to have a remarkably low win rate for players up to rival ratings. But why? Well, it's still the most conceptually backwards healer by far. Preservation continues to be the most aggressive healer by a wide margin. You need to do a lot more than healing to make the most of this spec, interweaving damage and CC constantly. And unlike most healers, you aren't reactively healing when someone is just low HP. You're kinda like a resto druid in a way, ramping up healing in advance, all while having some very weird defensive cooldowns. Cooldowns aren't simple damage mitigation effects, and either require more ramp up and preemptive play to make them work. Look at Stasis, for example. If you wanted to store a big heal before entering CC, you'd have to be mindful of Spirit Bloom or Verdant Embrace's cooldown before charging it up. You also have Emerald Communion, which heals allies only after your full health, and can even be countered with a simple Cyclone. Evoker is also littered with ways to min-max with core abilities like Reversion, which thanks to talents like Golden Hour that can do significantly more healing when used at the right times. Anyway, having strong damage and utility results in more proactive choices that force you to think ahead. And with more choices thrown at your face, it isn't too surprising that players would feel overwhelmed. People often get deceived looking at top-end representation, thinking that Prez must be strong and easy, but are left underwhelmed when trying it out. If you aren't already an experienced healer, you can easily struggle. All in all, since so many people seem to struggle with the spec, it will be going into the hard category once more. What we recently discovered was that Resto Druids are one of the lowest performing healers at lower ratings, statistically doing worse than Holy Priests of all things, but why? The hardest learning curve for the spec is being proactive, by preparing for incoming damage multiple globals in advance instead of firing up a big bang heal. Right now, the biggest problem is that the meta is way too fast to be proactive. You don't have time to ramp up your hots, and more often than not, you'll even feel behind when all of your hots are up. This makes the spec feel incredibly global intensive. There is just a lot to pay attention to simultaneously, and a split second mistake can put you instantly behind. Because healing feels weak, the only way to deal with damage is to prevent it entirely with Cyclone, which can be a difficult ability to actually use in some lobbies, and leaves the druid exposed to CC and swaps. It's a bit of a catch-22. You can't heal the damage with HOTS alone, and you can't really afford to take too many risks by spamming Cyclone. Right now, there's no doubt that players are struggling with Resto Druid, which is why it will be going in the hard tier for this patch. Finally, we have Resto Shaman, the healer whose main flaw is that it has to play with human players. No matter how many markers or yell macros you attach to your earthen wall, most of the time your teammates essentially become blind pawns on a chessboard that are constantly making the wrong move. Luckily, Resto Shaman has a lot of instant cast healing, even with the new totemic build that people are playing, which gives you more AoE healing and the ability to get massive riptides. However, just like Preservation of Ochre, healing alone is not how Resto Shaman wins games, especially now in this fast meta. To deal with higher damage, shamans need to use every ounce of their toolkit, preventing damage through disruption, being quick to ground a cast, or root an army of BM pets. Overall, as a healer that feels quite global capped, this can be difficult to master for a newer player. Player, and despite the healing rotation still being quite basic, it's everything else that makes Shaman feel rough. Because of this, we will be moving Shaman back up to hard.
If you want to make WoW feel easier, we tailored each one of our healing courses to break down your rotation into a few simple steps that you can easily implement in your next arena, which we promise will mean more rating gains. Last expansion alone, we helped thousands of healers just like you hit their rating goals, like Gizmo here, a resto druid hard stuck at rival with over 5,000 games played, who gained over 600 rating in a few weeks just by using skill cap. Our damage and healing courses save you weeks or even months of your time, condensing down everything you need to know into bite-sized videos. You don't need to be scared to sign up because we have a rank of guarantee that promises you will gain at least 400 rating while using our service. So if you are serious about climbing, visit the discount link below to get started. Anyway guys, we want to thank you all for watching, see you soon.